In a Korean city, high-rise apartment buildings surge in popularity, creating a sprawling urban landscape. However, when a powerful earthquake strikes one morning, these structures crumble, leaving devastation in their wake. Min Sung, injured but alive in his remaining apartment complex, witnesses the widespread destruction. Meanwhile, residents gather to assess their options, struggling to utilize the management guide and restore power with a generator. Min Sung and his wife, Ma Yong Hua, ration supplies as they contemplate leaving for her father's safer abode. Yet, as survivors flock to their complex seeking refuge, the couple faces moral dilemmas and increasing tensions over dwindling resources. Despite initial hesitation, they extend kindness to those in need, reluctantly sharing their provisions. However, as more outsiders arrive, tensions escalate, culminating in a tragic explosion that tests their endurance and altruism. Young Tuck's quick thinking with a fire extinguisher initially attempts to quell the flames, but the situation escalates beyond control. He then races to release the emergency hose, passing it to Min Sung, who struggles to manage it. Young Tuck intervenes once more, resting control of the hose to douse the fire successfully. Grateful for his bravery, the residents convene a meeting, led by Jim Ai, to address the influx of outsiders. Ma Yonghua advocates for coexistence, yet tensions rise as differing opinions clash, exacerbated by dwindling resources and social divides. Seeking guidance, the group turns to Min Sung, who emphasizes the need for unity and organization during the crisis, prompting Young Tak's nomination as a leader, which garners unanimous support. With Young Tak at the helm, the residents vote anonymously on whether to expel the outsiders, highlighting the community's internal strife. Despite the majority favoring expulsion, they acknowledge the necessity of devising a plan beforehand. Later, as Mai Yonghua probes Min Sung about his vote, he grapples with haunting memories of the chaos preceding the earthquake. Recalling a traumatic incident where he witnessed a woman's death amidst the chaos downtown, Min Sung reflects on his own survival amidst the devastation. The following day, Young Tuck calls upon Min Sung to lead an anti-crime task force due to his past military experience. Alongside Gyum Ai, they assemble leaders with military training, emphasizing equality among residents regardless of ownership status. Plans for a dawn meeting armed with weapons, as a precaution against potential resistance from outsiders, are discussed, with a strict prohibition against lethal force. However, Do Kyun's abrupt resignation due to health concerns prompts judgment from his peers, stirring tension within the group. Meanwhile, Min Sung's preparation, including acquiring a metal bar as a makeshift weapon, raises concerns for Mai Yong Hua. At dawn, as Young Tak checks on his mother before joining the task force, Jiu Mai orchestrates a strategy to compel outsiders to vacate the premises, including the allocation of potential empty spaces. Tearful farewells ensue as Mi Yong Hua bids goodbye to the mother and child among the evicted. When the task force, armed with fences, confronts the outsiders, chaos erupts, leading to violent clashes and injuries. Despite initial setbacks, the residents rally together, fending off the incursion with determination. Young Tuck's fierce resolve, though marked by bloodshed, ultimately repels the outsiders, albeit at the cost of unsettling violence that troubles Mai Yong Hua. In the aftermath, the community unites to repair damages, redistribute resources, and fortify their complex against further intrusion consolidating their resolve to safeguard their collective home. Geom AI institutes a set of regulations within the community, delineating that only current residents are permitted residency, strict limitations on movement to prevent disturbances, prohibition of fires, and allocation of rations based on individual contributions to deter complacency. Given the scarcity of water, a system is devised for managing personal hygiene, requiring waste disposal in designated areas. Various task forces are established to maintain order and efficiency. The anti-crime unit oversees patrols and upholds lawfulness. The rationing team ensures equitable distribution of supplies, maintenance crews handle repairs, and a medical team attends to injuries, fostering a sense of cohesion and progress among the residents. Despite initial challenges, the collaborative efforts yield improvements to their living conditions. As shortages become increasingly pressing, Min Sung and a small group venture beyond the complex in search of sustenance amidst the city's ruins, encountering grim scenes of carnage, including the demise of the congressman. A distant explosion heightens tensions, but the team returns unscathed, 
albeit with mostly spoiled provisions, salvaged from the journey. Despite setbacks, the community remains resolute, spurred by a shared commitment to survival and solidarity in the face of adversity. Following their routine exploration of abandoned buildings, Min Sung's team uncovers only remnants of violence and death, with sporadic discoveries of meager food supplies failing to alleviate their persistent shortages. During one excursion, Min Sung confides in Young Tuck about their enduring hardships, expressing a belief in eventual rewards for their struggles and revealing Mai Young Hua's past miscarriage, which fuels her protective instincts toward the child. Meanwhile, back at the complex, Mai Young Hua is astonished to spot the child on a neighboring balcony, still in possession of the walkie-talkie. Racing to communicate with him, she discovers that Do Kyun has been harboring the child and his mother in his apartment. While scouring for resources, the team stumbles upon a tunnel leading to a new area housing a grocery store, where they encounter resistance from the owner. In a tense confrontation, Min Sung's impulsive action results in violence, prompting a swift retaliation from the group and culminating in a successful raid for provisions, albeit with unexpected consequences. Amidst their scavenging efforts, encounters with fellow survivors fuel rumors of a utopian refuge, yet fear and mistrust prevail reflecting the prevailing atmosphere of uncertainty and suspicion. Despite the prevailing tensions, the residents come together for a festive New Year's celebration, albeit marred by apprehension. However, an unexpected reunion with a former resident, Hai Wan, offers a glimmer of connection and hope as they embrace her into the community, symbolizing resilience amidst the chaos. Following the festivities, karaoke ensues as the generator powers the special occasion, Yet Young Tok's mind drifts to his past as Se Beom, a taxi driver who sought vengeance against the real Young Tok for his involvement in a scam organization. A violent altercation ensued, leading to Se Beom's assumption of Young Tok's identity amidst the chaos of the earthquake. As the residents gather for their weekly rations, tensions rise over the unequal distribution of provisions, with accusations of unfairness and resentment directed at the anti-crime force. Mai Yonghua overhears allegations of murder, prompting internal conflict within the community. In the aftermath, Mai Yonghua confronts Min Sung about his involvement in violence, expressing her disdain for such actions and urging him to cease his participation in the scavenging expeditions. Meanwhile, she extends her aid to Do Kyun and the hidden outsiders, while Young Tak pays a visit to Hai Wan under the pretense of delivering a heater. Their interaction turns tense as Young Tok confronts her about his true identity, eliciting a defensive lie from Hai Wan to protect herself. Later, as Mai Yong Hua tends to Hai Wan's wounds, a candid discussion reveals the harsh reality outside, contrasting with the residents' sheltered optimism and highlighting the grim truth of the world beyond their enclave. The tension among the women escalates as they accuse Hai Wan of rudeness and insinuate unfair treatment due to her late arrival and her father's perceived shortcomings. Feeling hurt and isolated, Hai Wan storms out, prompting Mai Yong Hua to follow her. Their conversation is abruptly halted by screams, signaling the discovery of a resident's body, a victim of outsider violence, accompanied by a chilling message warning of impending retribution. This grim revelation triggers painful memories for Young Tak, who recalls finding his daughter's lifeless body in the ruins. In response, he announces stringent measures to regulate departures from the complex and bolster security. Subsequently, the couple exits their apartment and is confronted with the tumultuous riot unfolding outside. Assessing the danger, they resolve to depart the complex. In the midst of their exit, a bomb is hurled towards the building, prompting Young Tak's swift action to deflect it. Despite his efforts, the explosion still occurs, claiming the lives of numerous individuals and leaving Young Tak critically injured. Struggling, he manages to seek refuge in an apartment but succumbs to his injuries shortly after entering. Following Young Tak's demise, looters seize the opportunity to ransack his belongings, prompting an exodus of residents from the complex. Meanwhile, Mai Yong Hua and Min Sung seek shelter in a dilapidated apartment for the night, grappling with Min Sung's pain exacerbated by their dwindling supplies. The following day, they continue their journey, distancing themselves from other survivors until nightfall forces them to seek refuge in a ruined church. Before drifting into slumber, Min Sung tenderly passes a keepsake to Mai Yong Hua, expressing his gratitude for their union. Tragically, the dawn reveals Min Sung's lifeless form, leaving Mai Yong Hua grief-stricken. 
However, her despair is interrupted by the arrival of a compassionate group of survivors who offer her solace, demonstrating the capacity for kindness among humanity in the face of adversity.